ECB press conferences are about reading between the lines. What did you read? Well, it certainly wasn't the most exciting meeting of all times. I think uh, they acknowledged that on the growth side, the picture looks a little bit better. But uh, if you look at the inflation forecast for 2023, that has remained unchanged uh, despite a small upgrade in, in core for 2023 from 1.3 to 1.4. So overall, uh, I would say that um, the ECB is somewhat more optimistic in general, but it's still miles away from the inflation target. So it makes perfect sense to keep doing what they're currently doing and maintain the current PEP purchase pace. Well, it does, though, as you pointed out, the broadly ba balanced felt like um, a little gift to the hawks to some extent. If we still keep March 2022 as the end date for PEP, doesn't that mean they're just going to have to taper faster kind of later in the year? Can their typical asset purchase program really sort of offset that? Yeah, I think tapering is a little bit of a misnomer when it comes to the ECB. The ECB said that they will buy assets until they raise rates, which is certainly not before 2023 at the earliest. So they will keep buying assets under one acronym or the other for the foreseeable future. And indeed, I would expect them to phase out the net purchases under PEP uh, over the course of next year, but to offset it to some extent by the regular asset purchase programs, the APP. So basically, we're in QE infinity. The ECB didn't raise rates in the last economic cycle. Do you think it's going to be able to raise rates in this e economic cycle? Do you think it's going to be able to stop QE in this economic cycle? As you say, 2023, we're still way away from target in terms of achieving the mandate. Does the mandate change? What, what has to happen for the, for the ECB, basically, to back off QE? I think uh, the strategy review is supposed to help them a little bit in answering that question. And I'm pretty sure that uh, one of the results will be to unconventional or to conventionalize the unconventional measures and to basically clarify that at the effective lower bound, it's fiscal who has to do the heavy lifting. And if you look at what's happening in fiscal in the US, for example, compared to what's happening in Europe, uh, that's, uh, that's a different ballpark. And uh, Christine Lagarde uh, mentioned that as well um, during the press conference, that it's uh, not that reasonable to extrapolate um, um, from what's happening in the US to the euro area because the, where we are in the cycle um, and where we are in terms of uh, policy accommodation is mm -hmm. just uh, very different. So I would expect uh, the ECB to... Uh, from here to uh, facilitate uh, a fiscal uh, first and foremost. So what does that actually then mean for rates? I mean, are we ever going to get sustained higher yields over in Europe then? Well, if you look at uh, that, uh, the first hike from the Fed is currently priced for, call it May 2023, and the first hike from the ECB is uh, priced a couple of months later, which is probably unreasonable if you look at the differences in the star forecast when it comes to inflation, the Fed is projecting to be around target in 2023, while the ECB is projecting to be miles away. So it's certainly uh, not, uh, it doesn't make that much sense to expect the ECB to go a couple of months uh, after the Fed. So it remains to be seen to what extent they will uh, be able to normalize a policy over the secular horizon. It doesn't look like that currently. And maybe Japan is a better comparison than, uh, than the US. So what do you do? Where's the opportunity in Europe right now? Well, we've seen uh, the bonds in general or the German government bond yields backing up uh, a little bit. So duration is probably somewhat uh, fairer to uh, what it has been historically. But at negative levels, it's hard to argue that it's a screaming buy. Um, but we still think there are pockets in, in spread space uh, uh, where you can find opportunities. For example, in peripherals, we still think the carry is reasonable and the spread is still compressible. To some extent, you have a lot more political stability there than you used to have. Um, and in select credits as well, um, you, can, you can do stuff. Uh, there is a relative value you can do also in high yield versus investment grade or financials mm -hmm. versus yeah, non-financials. So you have to be a little bit more bottoms up uh, instead of top down these days. 